This video demonstrates how spirometry and peak flow tests are performed and how the results can be interpreted. Respiratory function tests are important in the diagnosis of lung disease such as COPD, asthma and pulmonary fibrosis. Spirometry is being increasingly used in the primary care setting and so it is important to be familiar with the procedure. For spirometry, you will need a spirometer and a single-use mouthpiece. Hi there. Hi there. Today we're going to do a breathing test called spirometry. It involves blowing out into this mouthpiece and this machine, called a spirometer, measures how well you blow out. This sometimes makes patients feel a little bit dizzy, light-headed, so we're going to have you sitting down throughout. We'll also ask you to wear this nose clip just to make sure you're only breathing through your mouth uh, which can be slightly uncomfortable. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. And have you taken any inhalers today? Uh, no. It is important to know the patient's age, race, and measure their height so that their predicted values and percentage of predicted can be determined. If the patient takes inhalers, spirometry should be performed after short-acting bronchodilators have been taken, unless a test of airways reversibility is being performed. Okay, so first I'd just like to show you how to use the mouthpiece. So this part of the mouthpiece is single use and we've thrown away afterwards. I'd like you to hold the mouthpiece like this, yeah. and then put it in your mouth. Make sure you're not covering the hole with your tongue or your teeth. And then form a nice tight seal with your lips. Okay. Can you just show that? Okay, that's great, thanks. You can relax while I explain the next part. So I'd like you to sit up nice and straight. We're going to be measuring two things here, how quickly you can blow air out and how much air you can blow out. So I'd like you to take a nice deep breath in until your lungs are completely full. Put the mouthpiece to your mouth as you did before and then blow out as hard and as fast as you can and keep going for as long as you can. We need you to do that about three times. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, if you could just put that nose clip on for me. Yeah, sure. Okay, brilliant. And when you're ready... Okay. <sighs> encourage the patient to breathe out all the way and check their technique. Okay, that was great, thanks. You can relax while you catch your breath for the next one. Okay. This test measures the forced expiratory volume in one second, or FEV1, and the forced vital capacity, or FVC. The FEV1 to FVC ratio is therefore the proportion of air that is blown out in the first second of a forced expiration and is a key measurement in the distinction between obstructive and restrictive lung disease. It should be done at least three times for reliability. If two of these measurements are not within 5% of each other or the patient's technique is incorrect, then another measurement should be taken. In some situations, you may wish to measure the patient's vital capacity. Vital capacity, or VC, is a manoeuvre carried out during a gentle expiration, whereas FVC is a forced manoeuvre. The NICE guideline states that the measurement of slow vital capacity may allow the assessment of airflow obstruction in patients who are unable to perform a forced measurement to full exhalation. The best values should be taken for FEV1 and FVC. Most people with normal lungs are able to breathe out most of the air in the first second and so have an FEV1 to FVC ratio of greater than 0.7. In obstructive lung disease, the FEV1 is reduced as the obstruction reduces the rate of air escape without affecting the vital capacity as much. The lower the ratio, the more severe the pathology is likely to be. In restrictive lung disease, the FEV1 and FVC are usually equally reduced, resulting in an apparently normal ratio, but the individual measurements are lower than the predicted values. FEV1 and FVC both being less than 80% of predicted suggests restrictive pathology. For peak flow measurements, you will need a peak flow meter and a single-use mouthpiece. So now we're going to do a test called peak flow, which involves you blowing out into this tube. Peak expiratory flow rate is very simple, widely available, 
and commonly used in both the diagnosis of asthma as well as in the monitoring of response to treatment. So for this test, what I'd like you to do is stand up, hold the peak flow meter like this, take a nice deep breath as before and form a nice tight seal around the tube with your lips and then blow out as hard and as fast as you can like this. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. The peak flow reading should be taken either standing or sitting up straight to ensure good expiratory effort. As before, it would be important to ask about the last inhaler use to put results in context and to measure the height to compare results with predicted values. Okay, and when you're ready. That was good. And one more. The best of three peak flow readings should be taken, although if done correctly, these values should all be quite similar. This reading can then be compared against predicted values. Peak flow measurements are often used to stratify the severity of acute asthma attacks. A result of 50 to 75% of best, or predicted, suggests a moderate exacerbation. 33 to 50% suggests acute severe, and less than 33% suggests a life-threatening episode. Low or variable peak flow measurements, particularly with morning dipping, with corresponding symptoms are supportive of a diagnosis of asthma, and significant improvement in peak flow after bronchodilator use is particularly suggestive of asthma. In both spirometry and peak flow measurements, poor patient technique is a common pitfall. You must ensure that the patient forms a tight seal with their lips around the mouthpiece and does not obstruct airflow with their tongue or teeth. Demonstrating this can help. You should ensure the patient is making a good expiratory effort by breathing in fully, sitting straight or standing, and blowing out powerfully when required. With good patient technique, results are consistent.